Thanks for joining us. I'm Nick Richards, a partner with Green Spoon Martyr, and you have tuned in to Green Spoon Martyr's Quick Hits series, giving you everything you need to know in the cannabis industry. And today, I have got some really, really great guests with me today, both Paul Evangelista and Robert Boyda from Needham Bank. Needham Bank is a, an amazing partner for the cannabis industry. And I, I just feel so good to be able to bring these um, two really intelligent, great individuals before the cannabis industry so they can they just sort of clear up some of these issues around banking and, and what's possible and what's not possible. And, you know, I think it's just, um, you know, Thank you both Paula and Robert so much for joining us today. And I, 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 I want to pe pepper some, some sort of roller coaster cannabis industry banking sure. stories in with this as well. But, you know, t tell me a little bit about that. What, give me some history with Needham Bank and the cannabis industry and, and, um, and you know, bring me up to speed. Sure. So, um, you know, Needham Bank about two years ago began investigating the cannabis industry and putting together the infrastructure uh, required to onboard clients, monitor activity, and appropriately do the reporting to all of the governmental agencies that receive monthly and regular reporting. Um, <clears throat> so they were prepared to launch uh, their cannabis group um, you know, with this infrastructure in place. And along came an opportunity to absorb um, a portfolio that had migrated from Century to Eastern. And it represented um, a very large customer base and a very active customer base. And that absorption or that migration happened on April 1st. And it was an incredibly smooth transition um, and so we have onboarded 100% um, of our cus customer base over to Needham and continue to serve them both from a deposit perspective, um, cash management services. And one of the key differences with Needham is they have an exceptionally robust lending program. And so we are now, um, you know, entering this uh, new arena for the cannabis industry um, on the lending side. Um, something that other banks have done sporadically, including Century Bank, but Needham really has a robust program in place. And you know, in six weeks, we have a pipeline that is bursting um, with opportunity. Yeah, there's a lot of need for loans out there in the in the industry. And there was a lot of there's been a lot of uh, sort of, you know, predatory lenders out there as well. Uh, um, uh, Robert, tell me tell me a little bit about your background. Robert, fill me in on. on uh, I understand that uh, you guys are both Batman. Um, uh, and uh, so, uh, you know, tell, tell me about your uh, Cape Crusades. Absolutely. So I actually started with Century Bank about six years ago uh, in, as a relationship development manager in the main office, working with your traditional businesses. And then uh, that happened to be the same building that Paul Evangelista uh, mm -hmm. worked in as well. So, you know, over the, the first couple of years of my career at Century, uh, working in the main office, you know, Paul and I developed a relationship. I thought I'd be a good fit to to bring the sort of business development side of of banking to the cannabis industry, and it's been it's been about three years now. We really hit the ground running. We've we partner on pretty much all of the conversations that we have with both new and existing clients, and you know we really pride ourselves on, especially now being a a full service destination for for our cannabis clients, not just, you know, the deposit piece or the cash management or the lending. Paul and I work uh, in lockstep to make sure that we uh, support all of our clients in, for, in, in all areas of their uh, financial services relationship. So, Robert, absolutely. in the early days, I used to advise clients to not put their marijuana in the same safe as their cash, because that's a real good way to lose your bank account. Are, are you guys still getting smelly money? I mean, is that are, are we past that? We're way past that, Nick. <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, when we built out the cash counting room, and this goes back to the early days where 
we needed to keep the money segregated from non-cannabis money. So we built a separate cash counting room and we actually bought a machine that you could run money through and you could choose different scents to make the money smell differently. <laughs> um, and it wasn't, it wasn't to mask the smell of cannabis. It was more to eliminate it. And we never used it on cannabis cash because it didn't smell. Um, yeah. However, they do use the machine on monies from gas stations mm -hmm. and different restaurants, just because that is way smellier than cannabis money. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. I like that. So there, there's always there's always an industry that's worse. I always when people in, in rural communities complain about that, the smell of the cannabis cultivation facility, I always remind them about that, you know, cattle yard just down the road. That <laughs> smell too good either, guys. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so, nothing makes and nothing makes your eyes water like that. Oh, man. <laughs> So tell me about some, were there some challenges you had to overcome to, to, to get in, get it, get, you know, become the, the great partner that you are for the industry? Is there some, some, some stepping stones along the way? Um, did you, have you encountered any, any, any difficulties around that? You know, I mean, sure. We, we were pioneers at it um, back when we first started. And so there were no rules. There were no guidelines. we, we had the you know FinCEN memorandum, the coal memo, yeah. and around that we built um, policies and procedures and oversight processes, and we worked directly with um, our regulatory agency, um, and we're very transparent with both clients and these agencies, so there were no surprises, mm -hmm. and of course you know there were there were hiccups along the way and it was more trying to address the needs of the cannabis industry because early on they couldn't get a plumber to come and, you know, fix a pipe or a toilet. And if they did, and that plumber received a check from a cannabis entity and he deposited it at a bank that he or she may have been at for 30 years, their accounts got closed. So, we ended up becoming this catch-all for cannabis businesses as well as any business that served the cannabis industry. Now, mm -hmm. fast forward 10 years, you know, that problem seems to have abated a bit. Um, although we occasionally get these, you know, calls that, you know, I've been an electrician for 20 years and I'm being shut down by my bank because I did X. Yeah. And so we're available um, for those affiliated businesses, if you will. Um, and, and, and the position we've always taken is we're going to find solutions for our clients, cannabis or non-cannabis. And, you know, and the cannabis segment just posed a few more speed bumps, as we call them, but we always figured out how to go over them. Yeah, I, you know, that's that's kind of the story of the cannabis industry in so many ways. I think there's a lot mm -hmm. of parallels in other ancillary businesses in the cannabis industry itself and in, in, in what I'm hearing from you. Hey, hey, Robert, I got a question. So the the coal memo got yanked. Are are we still following it? I mean, that that it seems to me that there's nothing that's we don't have anything else to follow. Right. With the, other than the FinCEN and the coal memos. Um, are those still what banks are looking to for guidance? Yeah. So as far as as the compliance rules and regulations, you know, as Paul said, he actually started the program. It had to have been over a decade ago now, Paul. Um, yeah. And sort of worked with the regulators to sort of write the book on how to bank the industry. And that plan, strategic plan that we had presented is became the standard. And mm -hmm. now all of our audits were audited to that standard that we're continuously working to, to improve on. Um, you know, even recently, obviously, as you know, the, the back end and BSA compliance aspect of banking the industry is what really, you know, separates the banks that do it properly versus, you know, banks that, that theoretically don't. And, you know, that has been a huge area of focus uh, for us. We, we actually have 
have a new uh, compliance software partnership as well that we that we just started to just make it as efficient as possible and make sure that we're achieving complete transparency with all regulatory bodies uh, to make sure that we're still going to be you know available to our clients to continue to support them as we have over the past decade. Mm -hmm. Is that pro that program sounds interesting. So does that if I'm a depositor, does that make my life easier as well? It it does um, <clears throat> because up until now, like we we have to track sales that are done at a, the dispensary level on a monthly basis, and it's a very manual process, somewhat manual. The dispensary and or the cannabis entity has to send us sales reports at the end of each month and typically it's a download from their pos solution mm -hmm. so the the new solution that we at needham have um, engaged <clears throat> actually can automate that process mm -hmm. and so it becomes a monthly routine and it's you know makes it more efficient for the cannabis industry especially a cannabis um, operator that has three or four three dispensaries a wholesale business instead of doing four different sales sheets the system can automatically pull it um when required that that those are the kind of solutions that the cannabis industry really needs you know because mm -hmm. there is such a compliance burden in in, in coming from so many different areas for the industry mm -hmm. that the, the more we can help them meet that compliance burden and and take some of the minutiae away um, you know, the better they can operate their business and, and get to get to profit. Um, uh, Robert, um, uh, did you uh, are you um, involved in that program as well? Is that part of your client relationship um, um, kind of stuff you're doing? It is. So whenever I engage with a potential new client, uh, we actually start our onboarding process with this um compliance software as the initial point of, of upload for entity documents. And it stays in the background throughout the onboarding process as these entities get closer to opening, uh, more documents will be required such as, you know, CCC applications, security plans, et cetera. They all get uploaded to this compliance portal as well. And then once our, our clients are up and running and selling um, product, we would partner with them to get them set up on the back end compliance aspect of the solution that Paul was referencing that will link with their accounting software on one side and metric on the other side to, to automatically reconcile sales reports on a monthly basis, which allows our, you know, dispensary managers not to have to complete, you know, a manual Microsoft Excel sheet every month, which was the yeah. practice prior because you know, overall, you know, banking is a pretty heavily regulated business in general. And then if you add the cannabis, layer to that we need to be just uber compliant and i think you know we look for for ways to continue to reach this peak efficiency uber compliance and this is just another step that we've taken exactly exactly i mean let me just add to that you know nick you, you said it's very there's a lot of there's a lot of compliance in the cannabis industry it just multiply that by however many co companies the bank is banking. Yeah. We receive all of this. So you can only imagine the tidal wave of documents we receive every month that we need to balance and match up. So if we can find a solution that can make life easier for the cannabis industry, it also on the back end makes life easier for us. Super, super good stuff. Um, really, really, really exciting to have Needham Bank as a partner uh, in this industry. Um, I, we're, we're kind of getting on time here and I want to just ha leave it with this one question for each of you. So if, if I'm a, if I'm a cannabis company, wh what can I do to be a better depositor, to be a better client, to not lose my account? What, 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 do, what do I need to focus on? Um, you know, obviously there's giving you the information that you're, you're requiring me to give you. Um, but, but beyond that, is there, are there some things I should have in my head to, to keep, keep me in good graces with the bank? I, I mean, I'll go back to transparency and, you know, we, maybe we've been fortunate, but in the decade that we've been doing this business and 
you know, and it's been pretty prolific. We have never had a reason to shut an operator down. Um, we believe that, and we emphasize this at the onboarding, um, this is a partnership. And so, you know, what we want your business to thrive, but we need to be made a, aware of any issues that you may have and we want to help you resolve those issues and so i think it's pretty clear and if you spoke to our clients we have an open door policy people have my cell phone they have robert's cell phone and other team members cell phone and we're available seven days a week um you know, wow. we'd prefer we we'd prefer not Saturdays and Sundays, but you know what? A, I prefer that. A, too, cust yeah. <laughs> a, a customer in need is a customer in need, but um, right. we have built very strong ties with our clients, and um, I think you know you follow the rules. Like if you're bringing on a vendor, we want to know who that vendor is. We don't want the surprise of a transaction hitting your account without our ability to at least know who the vendor is and do a modicum of diligence on them to make sure that they are doing the right thing as well. And is that, like you say, vendor, is that for, uh, I mean, is that Point every of, vendor? Is that every vendor? Or are there some some vendors that, that rise to that that level? Mostly the payment vendors. You okay. know, um, if you're using cashless ATM, we want to know who you're using before you sign up and the first transaction hits your account. Got and, it. And we make that clear from the get-go, and we really never had or experienced an issue even with that. Um, we may, you know, suggest another vendor or if we, because we will investigate a vendor to make sure that they are fully compliant because we don't want to have a service interruption for the cannabis client because that's yeah. huge, hugely disruptive. But um, we work with our clients and we're transparent with them and they're transparent with us and it turns into a beautiful 10 year partnership. But, you know, I've talked a lot about, you know, how the bank is consistently trying to find ways to innovate and sort of move into the future because the industry is so uniquely situated. Um, I ask typically our clients as well to, you know, to seek, seek out opportunities to, to innovate as well, you know, as far as, you know, partnering with us in our compliance uh, software or leveraging, you know, newer vendors like um, um, alternative modes of cash transport and deposit, or, I mean, even as far as cash list solutions, you know, any way for, for them to innovate also helps us on the back end. So it sort of helps the partnership become more efficient. So. That's typically right. what I recommend is to continue to keep your ears open to, to try to move and progress into the future. Mm -hmm. Really good. Really good information. Paul, Robert, thank you both for joining us today. We really appreciate your wisdom on this and um, really look uh, everyone out there. You're looking for your banking partner. I know you all are. You see him right here on your screen. Uh, uh, two straight shooter, honest guys that want to help you get an account and keep your account. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, gentlemen, for joining us today. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Nick.